All right, YouTube, so we got to definitely get another package. I'm going to see what's in this joint. I feel like some crows, though. I'm not even going to lie to y'all. Hey, you got crows. Oh, these is hard. Let me take this red joint out for y'all. Shout out to Trap Bar, but I'm going to show y'all his Instagram panel. Everything. So far, your shirt. And for the T, you got the T outliners and the skeleton, so that's clean. Got red. Got like a peaches pink that I want. I got that yellow and black version. And I got that magenta is purple. Yeah, I'm gonna have Trap Barber somewhere down here in the screen. Y'all go follow him. Go get some apparel. He got some dope, dope, dope clothes. I'm definitely rocking with these. I appreciate you, bro. And um, probably in my next video. I'm going to go ahead and throw one of these shirts on so y'all can see how they fit as well. So, y'all lock in with my boy. by going in by picking my client's hair I want to pick around the edges because my client is starting to do something that's called free form and he's gonna basically be going into dreads he don't want to cut none of the bulk of his hair so it makes no sense to pick everything else out besides the area that will be tapered or that will be blown out so I want to pick out most of the edges give myself some room so I can set myself up to just cut this hair and prep it for a nice taper my next step I want to go in with a number two guard completely closed I'm using the hilt of my blade and I'm going at a diagonal angle just so it won't be so much of a separation from thick hair to you know cut hair so i'm gonna go back and forth from with the grain against the grain and i just want to ensure that i'm gonna get this hair down to a desired length prepping it for a nice taper next step i go in with my babeless fx's and i'm going to create a rainbow like shape towards the bottom of the temple area right above the ear giving myself room to kick this taper off step completely open giving myself about a half of an inch creating some room and then I'm gonna drop down on the beard and I'm just start to fade this area as well this area was super fast so I just wanted to just knock this area out quicker my next step drop them halfway fade in between halfway start to get more transition and fully close and as you guys can see boom it's there Next step, one eighth guard, which is a number one guard. I'm going to go in completely closed, using the hilt of my blade, getting more of a transition. It's trying to feather out this dark hair and get this hair to create a nice transition. Always brushing one, always fading one, staying up to par. Drop to my one sixteenth guard, halfway closed. And as you guys can see, get more transition. Right behind the ear where it's super dark air, where it'll be distinguished that your taper isn't as good. You want to get behind that ear, clean that area up too, guard off. And now I'm using the hilt of my blade to create some type of shape. Seeing that I cut most of this hair down on the side so his sides can be exposed. I'm going to go in with a comb and lift that hair just so I can see how hard that ridge is. And then I'm going to hit it with my clippers just so I can get that transition back. Flicking in and out using my brush, using my comb, staying up to par with the situation. Next step, I go in with my babeless FXs. I'm hitting my ball line in the back, giving myself about a half of an inch because my client got enough neck room for me to be able to create a nice taper. But I think what's going to be a little different about this client, his hair grow everywhere. So right here is a one and a half guard, and that's completely open. And I'm just basically flicking at this line, creating a nice transition without creating hard lines. Then I go completely open, giving myself about another half of an inch. And look, as you guys can see, his left side, his hair go to the left, and his right side, his hair go to the right. So it's hard for me to brush the hair down. I gotta brush it to the sides because his hair don't come directly down. 
Now to use them on one sixteenth guard, keeping everything consistent and still trying to work on that transition. Just in the meantime, I'm working on that transition. Always remember to use the hilt of your blade, brush one, fade one, or brush one and comb one, and just stay consistent and let everything come natural. And as you guys can see, I'm using a lot, a lot, a lot of flick work right here, not laying my clippers flat at all, just trying to create transition without digging into too much bulk of his hair while also executing a nice taper. And as you guys see when I brush away, the hair lays perfect because the hair is growing out to the right and out to the left. And you actually finna see me kind of try to brush it downwards and you gonna see how the hair separates. That's how you know that his hair should not be, you know, brushed downwards. Right here is where you see me brush it down, so I'm gonna have to brush it back to the right side just to ensure that I get that hair to lay back down. My transition is pretty much done here. Go back to this side, now it's time to speed it up. I go in with my one and a half guard just so I can clear this bulk and break into my taper. My message for the day is, man, if you get up in that mirror sometimes, or you get up and you stand up in that mirror, and you're not proud of the individual, you know, that you see in that mirror, then we just gotta focus on it. And we gotta focus on being better and we just gotta lock in you gotta cut out unnecessary habits and i'm not saying that cutting out any habits is gonna be easy at all because they are not but it's better for you to cut out a lot of unnecessary habits just so you can focus on bettering yourself you know as a person um and that's just something that came across me i kind of got up i got complacent in the spot that i'm at i want to get back you know in the gym redo my membership and things of that nature it's just like you know getting up every morning and, and you look in that mirror and it's just like you could be 10 times the individual that you are today it's you know it's, and it's just slight things like motivation that throw you off um you gotta find a way to be motivated you gotta make a purpose you gotta make it about somebody else besides yourself because when you do it for other people it is so much more easier to execute i just want y'all to be focused man and if you ever have problems with standing in front of that mirror it's time to change that man I already know that journey gonna be super hard, super hard to, you know, focus on. But the biggest part about that journey is, you know, you doing it for you and you doing it for something that's bigger than you. That's always gonna be super important. And you just gotta take care of yourself, take care of your health, and just make sure that you are 100%. Don't get complacent because it's always somebody out there working 10 times harder than you. So keep your foot on the gas and stay locked in. Right here, I'm doing an important step. I'm using the hilt of my blade, but I got my Andis Masters with no guard on. and I'm basically trimming this front area down without taking it too low I'm basically sculpting it as you guys can see I just wanted to thin this area out so I can give myself some lineup area just because down here in Chicago a lot of the guys do not like you know heavy density on the front of their lineup they like to trim some of that down but they don't we don't overdo it here and that's super vital to our process we don't like overly distinguishing the liner from the dark hair I think that's terrible that's why we like to fade it in and give it you know a nice feathered look my next step is to go in with my M spritz and lock this uh spritz in I want to make sure that I lock all the hair in the place and you know set it up for that kill shot it's time to get real crispy it's time to hop in that duffel y'all know what time it is when i'm doing this i'm literally loading that chamber and you know we, f we finna turn it up right here so i go in using my gold fx's and i basically want to hit my slants keeping my blade completely straight and on the slant parts you can use the whole blade clip some of this neck panel and then as soon as i get to the tip of the ear i'll convert to the corner of my blade to work myself around that corner i like to you know set up myself up for high precision kills i like to set myself up for that real cleanliness look my clients all love that that's what i'm known for in chicago people come to me for you know the cleanliness they come to me for the real crispy lineup like and that's what's super dope about my clientele my clientele care about how precise they lineups is so i always gotta stay on my cue with that i go in using my gold fx is dropping the back of my beard line i need this completely straight and i need to clear this bulk out the way and as you guys can see this is gonna be a monstrosity like this is gonna be crazy you can already tell looking at the tape or looking at the neckline and the back of the beard line just how the silhouette coming together you know i'm just framing out and it's all a frame out work 
this all frame at work We ain't even nowhere yet So repeat the same steps on this side Cause whatever you do to one side You do to the other side Like I told y'all Whenever I'm doing lineups It's like common denominators It's like mathematics Whatever you do to the bottom of that fraction You gotta multiply You know on the top of that fraction And break it and make it even So same thing with the lineup Whatever you do to one side You do to the other In reference to that lineup To make it even that's always important. Whatever you do to one side, do to the other side. And I promise you, your images will come out more consistent and they will look more like twins. And that's what it's about with a lineup. Like, lineups aren't eyebrows. Eyebrows ain't gotta be twins. They could be sisters. As long as they look similar to eyebrows, it's nice. But when it comes to a lineup on men, it gotta be consistent. It gotta be almost twins. You need this thing to be identical almost. I understand people get, you know, some deficiencies in a lineup, but you do what you can. So I break in the middle, then work my way all the way to the left side, creating a nice, prominent, hard line. This one finna be gas, y'all. I'm telling y'all, this lineup gonna be super crazy. Then I drop, do my vertical bars, all because I know in the vertical bar area, my client hair isn't as dense as the front of the lineup. So you just want to keep everything consistent and line it up as if the hair is as dense as it is in the front. Just keep everything consistent. Then doing my Chicago C, starting from the bottom, working my way into the curve, taking it super lightly. I don't want to press. My clippers are super, super, super set, super modified, super GTX, however you want to call it. It's all of that. And if I press too hard, I can nick my client. So I just want to take my time, tap and go, keep the head straight. And as you guys can see, I'm producing a dope, dope, dope lineup. And it's just super vital to the process, man. You take your time with everything. You tap and go and you really frame this thing out. How can you mess that up? You know what I mean? So as you guys see, drop my vertical bar. And like I told y'all, I'm going to line it up as if the hair is just as dense, you know, on the side of the head as it is in the front of the head. All because I know his vertical bar area is nowhere near as dense as the front. Not that my client is losing his hair. He just don't possess the density on the side of the head as he do in the front of the head. But, you know, with all techniques and just being a big professional in this game, you got to learn how to elude. You got to learn how to incorporate different products and techniques just so you can score efficiently my next step i go in with my boy sean cuts hair color enhancement card at a three to four inch distance radius using my product the beam team coilless compressor and my color no drip and we're just basically adding enhancements to the lineup enhancements is doing nothing but enhancing the lineup that's what they use for like there's no way around enhancements they're part of the game now and just evolutionizing it and normalizing it in the game and making this an added service in your repertoire or your arsenal is how you up that ticket so i understand you got your people in the comments who won't care for color enhancement i'm not here to make y'all believe in it but when i tell y'all that i'm making an extra 15 to 20 dollars per service off of it i mean it's no way to duck that conversation so i go in using my barber magic pencil and i'm creating super thin lines treating it the same way women would treat their eyebrows they clean their eyebrows up first go in add some color or fill in into their eyebrows and they conceal their eyebrows and it's the same technique just use them barbering just so i can score efficiently and i could create a nice contrast and get this real crispy clean look like my client lineup is already clean he already crispy but why not shape shift and push that to another level and that's what my channel about it's always about taking your image you know to a level further than what it already is at that's super important man we gotta score efficiently over here that's what i do on my channel that's what i bring to youtube i bring high efficiency scoring i bring a level of consistency that nobody else bring i bring a level of precision that people are scared to even try it's just you know this is my part of the game this is my blessing to the game. I don't want to sound cocky. I don't want to sound none of that. I'm humble enough to give y'all my game thorough and through and through. I don't want to hide no techniques. I want all my supporters to grow with me. I want us to be consistent and, you know, efficient together. That's the thing. When you hear a, a, a Beam channel and you a part of the Beam team, you are displaying and dishing work like this. It's fire, dog. So I hit the bottom of the mustache because I know the mustache is a little bit thick. Hit the bottom of the mustache around the lip doing a nice thin line. Then right at the above the mustache giving it a nice clean line. Not too thin of a mustache but not too thick of a mustache either. Giving myself some nice room and giving myself a nice lined mustache. 
My next step, I go in, stretch that skin, angle that raise at a 45 degree angle, bring everything back to its highest point. My client will have his beard at its highest point. And as you guys can see, it's looking real clean. I'm gonna have to go in with a whisk after cleaning up above the cheekbone area here, dust it off and go right back at it. Cause cleanliness is next to godliness. And the more that we do it, or the more times we put that shot up, it's gonna eventually drop. And when it drop, it's gonna be all neck. And that's how it goes in the barber game. The more you consistently put them shots up, it's gon' drop. It's no way around it. Ice. Stretch the skin, angle that raise at a 45 degree angle, bringing everything back to that line up. It's crazy, man. Then under the beard. Cleaning up under there and just cleaning up all of this loose hair up but keeping it wide at the bottom of the beard. This is really clean, y'all. Then I'm gonna go in using some water. I'm gonna wet this hair a little bit before. As I told you, I go in with some wrapping lotion as well. And I just wanna moisten this hair up and then go behind it with my curl sponge to create them nice, clean, tight, curly knots. His afro will not be even, but he want this curly look and it's super fire right now. So in an imperfect world, we do get these clients that come in after a couple months looking crazy by the head, but as barbers, we are the first form of surgeons, and it's up to us to change that outcome, and on my channel, there's no way to give it up but this way, let's lock in. Hashtag TBT in that comment section, hashtag Glacier Gang, we in that duffel again this year, it's 2021, man, we super focused, we locked in, we ain't going nowhere, we gonna stand up in their chest every chance that we get, and if you was able to make it through the 16 and 7 17 minute video. I appreciate you so much and may God bless. Last time I cut him up was in the summertime. Let me know what y'all think about that. That was a banger right there.